Hello everyone, and in this video I'm going to be covering 3D printed clone troopers. I'm going to be covering a new variant that I recently printed. I'm going to be covering this older variant that I reviewed on the channel over a year ago, as well as Lego's variant. I'm going to be comparing and contrasting the different variants, as well as coming to a final conclusion as to the pros and cons of 3D printing different kinds of Lego elements as well as the full design process for all of these figures. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So first off, I want to start off with the newest variant and get right into the actual construction process that I went through in order to accomplish these figures. So I used Autodesk Inventor. It is, a, of course, an Autodesk product, and it is a 3D building application that is available on all kinds of different desktops. I won't be showing the actual application, however, you can look it up online and get a few tutorials on it. It's very easy to use and it's great for different kinds of 3D modeling. So ultimately, the full construction took 4 days. Each of my class periods is 45 minutes, so it was about 180 minutes, give or take, to actually design the full clone trooper. It wasn't super difficult, in fact, it was actually quite simple. There were only a few different kinds of ridges that I will point out all along the figure that were a little bit more difficult. Now, the actual printing process, I used Simplify 3D. I printed the supports on the back just to give the figure a little bit more shape. And then the full printing time for one of these is just 38 minutes on a Maker Gear V2 hotbed printer. And I printed three at a time, so I printed almost 12 different clone troopers. So that all in all took roughly about two hours, give or take, depending on the different kind of filament used. Now, I printed a variant in pink that you guys can see here. I printed a variant in blue, as well as one variant in green that I won't be showing inside of this video. Now, as far as the final print goes, you can see that there are some supports on the back, like I mentioned prior, just to give some shape to the actual figure. And it printed like this, so the hand would be sticking up, and I could get as much detail on the face as I possibly could. Just a quick look there. And then afterwards, I took the supports off. They're not a permanent thing. And you can see the backside. Now, the most obvious thing about the backside is of course that this is a hollowed out area and that's because the supports are unable to generate a fully enclosed area right along here if I have the supports. However, if I hadn't included the supports, there's a very high likelihood that this arm right here and this arm right here wouldn't have come out very well. I could have of course put both of the arms downwards, but I wanted one arm to be standing upwards so that it could fire a weapon or something like that. Some of the hands on many of the prints messed up as well. You can see some of the extruder marks along those. But the detail was accomplished quite well. Now, the actual printing heat of this actual print, it was 220 degrees Celsius for the extruder, and it was 70 degrees Celsius on the hotbed. So, it had a very high printing temperature, and I also used PLA filament. Now, if I had used ABS filament, that wouldn't have made much of a difference. It would have just created a much sturdier clone trooper. It probably would have had a little bit more weight to it. PLA is a much lighter and it's a much less costly material, which is why I'm, that's what my school typically uses. But overall, this is a great improvement from the last model, which is what we'll be getting into right now. This right here, guys, is the older model that I have. Now, the older model has its differences, and it also has its similarities to the other model. The largest difference is that this one actually has a rotating head, so there's an actual helmet piece that prints separately. I also only printed one of these, but there is one thing to note that the legs and the hands are quite brittle. As far as constructing this figure, I used AutoCAD, which is another Autodesk product, and it's not as good for 3D modeling. I think that could have definitely compromised a lot of the results of this actual print. Now, as far as the sturdiness goes, it was printed on a MakerBot replicator printer. Um, and that printer is much more expensive than a MakerGear V2, which is what I used to print the other one. 
However, it is known to have its problems. So placing them side by side, this one aesthetically looks much better. However, this one does have the head movement capability, which is quite unique to that figure. But overall, this one is just way better. You can see that it's a much cleaner design. This one has a much wider head. And this is basically when I was just starting to learn how to use the applications. However, right here, this is me more understanding the actual process and using a much better software tool in order to develop the full figure. Now, I'm going to move this one out of the way since it's obviously not the best. And I'm going to move in the actual Lego Clone Trooper. So this is the comparison, and as you can see, the LEGO version is obviously much better, and that's to be expected. Now, the things that I think my model is able to accomplish quite well is the actual leg and the overall LEGO shaping of it. Now, my model is actually slightly shorter than the LEGO model. You can see that because the camera's positioned horizontally right now. So this version's a bit taller. This version's also a bit thinner as you can see right there, and it actually has its visor engraved into the print. Well here, if you were to take the visor off, um, you would actually just have a, just a completely blank area right there. There wouldn't be any indentation like you see here. You also see an indentation where the belt is, as well as where the sort of chest pauldron or chest protectors are. We'll get into the back. The back on this is almost completely plain. There's a small ridge right there. And this one is completely flat. You'll also notice there are two stud holes right here. They actually don't connect to any actual studs themselves. And this of course has four so that a figure may be able to sit down. This one also does not move. It's basically as stiff as a rock. This arm does not move. This arm stands still. And of course the feet do not move either. You may be wondering what this actual little block is. And that's just one of the supports for the foot. Because since it was printing like this, it needed to be able to add a support in order to get that top area. So overall, this is obviously a much better option. However, if we are getting into the complete idea of 3D printing different kinds of figures, I do think it's a good idea to give a try to. Are you ever going to get results just like Legos? Probably not. But to be able to design a clone trooper is actually quite interesting and it's a very difficult process but it's also a quite a rewarding process in itself. I think the figures came out quite well for this overall project and of course there are many things that you could change about these figures and if you wanted to you could paint them, customize them, do whatever you wanted with these figures. Overall though I think it was a fun project. Are you ever going to get as close to Lego's variants? Like I said probably not. However, as far as the 3D printing aspect goes, that's where you wouldn't be able to get the results. But using something like a mold injection machine, where you're taking this actual model, like this, the software, and you're then placing that into a mold and filling it with hot plastic, that's something that you could get very similar to what LEGO does, because that is what they do. So with that, it would just be about projecting the design correctly and getting all the dimensions right. That's what brands like Clone Army Customs will do, as well as LEGO themselves. Overall though, this was a fun project. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's obviously a huge improvement from this, which was a year ago, about maybe 15 months ago I printed that one. So this is a fairly large upgrade, except of course the helmet movement there. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about 3D printing in general, 3D printing different kinds of Lego elements, or maybe just any tips or pointers on how to do that, please do put them in the comments below. Also, there's a full review that was from a very long time ago where I have a high-pitched voice um, in the description below, or you can just simply look up 3D printed Clone Trooper. It's got just about a thousand views, which is quite high for my channel but it entails everything more specifically about this figure. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.